have you as well. This thing still smells of Kentucky Fried or Majora Fried resistors. We'll try a raid suggestion, put a bigger load through it and see if it smokes more. Let's we'll see if the smoke in this thing varies with load. Let's just see. Okay, ballast bunny shut off main. So 400 watts on this 3 ds RCD. Let's see if 400 watts is going to do it. Six amps. Unplug safety first. Obviously, it's not going to get hot because it's just pulling 400 watts. That's all it's doing. Don't feel any heat there yet. May not be enough. Sitting there quite happily. No trip. Hmm. What if I can phantom load this thing? I might try that. Hmm. I wonder if I can phantom load this. Unplug safety first. Yeah, not getting warm. So all it's doing is pulling 400 watts. That's all it's doing. I'm not getting any smoke here. All right. I might try phantom loading it. Might be a more energy efficient way of doing it. If I can phantom load an electricity meter, surely I can phantom load one of these. Power in there, power in there. Transformer from there to there. And it should just phantom load it. Yeah, I think that'll work. So let's put the um, knot from there to there. Not between those two, because all it's going to do is short. So I'm going to have to go from there to there to, to phantom load it. Probably won't do much, but we'll see if it does anything. Since it's a neutral side that smokes up, I just want to just fair to let it straight from low voltage high current on the mic. No mains on this. Interesting. Doesn't need it, but it might work that way. There you go. Two forty volts. Now, because it's current and it's only at what uh, two volt, two volts max, it's not going to be any danger touching that. I like the car, but the voltage is completely safe. All right, small thing getting hot in there. Strictly a two forty volt burnout. I will see one in neutral. It's pulling a little bit less actually. Nah, it's on the wrong side, yeah. That's the RCD part, the breaker itself's in here. This part here, these three phases of the breaker itself. All I'm doing here is just burning out the neutral bus bar in there. Where the, the um, residual current part of it is. It's getting a bit warm. Turn that down, unplug safety first. Alright. Now let's just test some normal operation, so we'll plug it into these um, parts here. Since that's not going to trip it, I can't just put the PFC back across this bit. I've got to put it between here and here, or here and here, and short these two out, and it should go bang. Anyway, I'll try that with the, um, this principle. Put one in here, and one in here, and just short this end here out, and try that. It's got a bit warm. Okay, a bit of metal shorten out the load. Let's put the um, high current in there. No trip. No trip. That metal's getting warm. Getting warm in there. So load is not really wanting that to burn out. It's not a load thing as such. Sure, it's almost not even getting warm, but that is. No test. 
All right. I'm not convinced. One more try, I'll unplug safety first. Let that cool off for a bit and we'll try just straighten the phase bit instead of the neutral bit. It's got a chip now, surely. No. Yeah. No way, you can't fail to load in a, a circuit breaker. I guess this breaker's dead altogether. Shit. It's not a breaker at all, it's just a short. Ah, oh, it's actually still um, not even switching off. <laughs> That's not even switching off. Then again, I'll try something else. Turn it off, unplug safety first. In theory, if I short the outside out from phase to phase, you're on the load side. If you put a short on the load side, it's got a trip. But if I put one side here and one side there and put one on the other side, try it that way. Just to be sure. Try to hook it up that way. Now I should have tripped before, short to short. Holy crap, it's not chipping. It must have rolled it shut. Still on. Damn, that breaker's not a breaker. <laughs> Damn, the circuit breaker don't work. And I'm doing all possible combinations here, the combinations here, to create a short between any one of those. Either way, combination, it's just still a trip. It's not tripping. Yeah. That's not a circuit breaker, that's just a shunt. <laughs> nah, that's not right. Alright. PFC back, cut back may finish this off, but if this isn't going to burn it out, this is a dead short, so it's probably not going to do much across that. Oh, finally! But I still pull a lot of ramps. Getting smoky in there. That's just burning out, bugger it. Trips, trips, not gonna stay on, it's off. 63 amp breaker. Now I'll turn it down. I've cooked it enough, unplug safety first. Alright, now it reset. Nah, no, I didn't get too hot in there. It's warm inside the back there. Oh, I'm arriving here. Oh yeah. Ooh. Whoops. Yeah, the tape gives way first. <laughs> Alright. I think it's fair I'm gonna put it across the cap bank. That's how I'm gonna wire it up. I try between there and there. I put a short between there. Cap bank between there, there. So I put a bit of wire. A big chunk of bit of wire, a U-shaped bit of wire on both sides. And I attach the cap bank to those. Or one on each side. That's the best method to pop it, I reckon. Alright, we need to pop. We need to connect the ZBS. Positive there, positive there, negative there. Alright. Connect it up there. Alright, that's good to go. Check the ZPS. Good. Alright. 
Then bloody ass said, yeah. Interesting. All right, let's try connecting it another way. All right, now I've hooked it up a little differently. Let's see if this gets any better. All right, so the negative. Positive. Charging. Anyone? Whoa! Unplug safety first. Disconnect ZBS. Pass the discharge. I like the test to short it out. Is that the SSI isolated? Right. Still ain't blood a bloody thing up. I can't believe it. Four and a half thousand out breaker. Yeah, I haven't got enough charge, enough power to charge at ZVS. I'm only running it off 24 volts. It's not getting enough charge. Well, since I don't have another Allen battery like that one, and that one out of repair failed so badly, I can't, just cannot get that battery to charge properly anymore. Because it, um, I've just tried so many different screws in the uh, repair that interconnect this trap, and I've worn it out so much there's not enough lead to bite into it anymore. So that battery's gone, so that other battery, the TCM one's too weak for this um, bank. So I need another bigger, bigger battery for that bank to run this FVS properly. So, because 24 volts isn't enough, I need 36, so I need a damn good 36 volt source in this FPS in order to pop things on this bank really good. This takes too bloody long on 24. It's got to be on 36 volts, high powered. But since this thing I couldn't get um, enough charge in that bank to blow this thing to smithereens, let's just do a tear down and find what failed. I bet it was that resistor that failed in there on the RCD part. So I've got to dig these clips here and pull this thing apart. Once you put these things apart, you're never going to get them back together. They're assembled a certain way in the factory, these things. This is a Spanish made one. Merlin Gavin. MG. Clips will use the same design, and their new breakers are made in India. It's a shame they don't make anything like this in Australia anymore. And they seem to take electrical safety for granted For granted these days. They're making stuff in countries so other than Australia, they meet our standards. Anyway, let's pull this thing apart came apart quite neatly. Get just slid off. My PFC cap bank did do something. Check out the flash mark in there. Despite not having much charge in it to do anything. There's a mechanical part. Spring in there. That spring in there looks like it connects to that. Touches in there some of that just springs a button itself out. The trans the tore the transformer in there. Ribbon cable. What that does, did it touch to anything still? Probably not. Might still be a touch of something, but that chat someone might come useful. Yeah, it's been burnt out. The end of it's burnt out. It goes in there. When I press a test button, I press a little button in here. And that chips something in there. That's a switch in there. I pull it off. Aha! Micro components, surface mount components on the film this uses. Interesting, they've changed the design. There you go. But that's that button that's supposed to create the short to earth. And it doesn't seem to want to move it sticky. It doesn't want to touch the string back here. There's a switch contacts in there somewhere. There's a switch contacts in there. There you go. The switch contacts are here. It goes through this transformer, then here. And this transformer will set the current sensing transformer. We're sensing in balance in the current. So if I've got 10 amps going for a load, and it's the load's rated for 12 amps, I've only got 10 amps going in, and there's two amps losing somewhere. Now that measures imbalance in the load, and this thing trips. And that's what the residual current is. 
So if a load's put, you got 12 amp load, and you're only getting 10 amps coming back to the turn down in neutral, instead of the full 12, this is picking up an imbalance somewhere through this transform and it senses that and trips. So that's what residual current is. When it's not necessarily earth leakage like I've been saying in the last videos. Date code 9th 2002. A GFCI, ground fault circuit interrupter, specifically trips only if something goes to ground only. But a residual current device will only trip if there's an imbalance coming back at the neutral line. So if I put pull 12 amps, the load's ready for 12 amps, and I'm getting 12 amps the same as what's going in, back down to neutral, it's, not, it's fine, the load's balanced. But if I lose 2 amps, and this 2 amps is going leaking somewhere to ground or to whatever better ground or somewhere, it will trip. So this part is alright. Hmm, I wonder what burnt out. Must be a bad connection in here then. The switch, remember that there's a, that the... I reckon that's a switch contact in here. The contact in there is bad. That's where the smoke was coming from. Because this part here is fine. It doesn't spring back out though. Might pull out transformer and see if I can vary it and see what voltages I get out of it. Interesting to see how one of these works though. Anyway, that'll be enough for now. Thanks for watching.